My fascination with John Clare began by just discovering poems that I saw as having incredible suggestive possibilities for a composer. As a poet, he's a very musical writer. And knowing that he was also a violinist and fascinated by music and a performing musician has just reinforced my sense of his poetry as having a music in it that I want to explore in my own terms. Until now, my responses to Claire have effectively been in the realm of song. Uh, I set a whole sequence of his poems in a piece called Love Songs for Mary Joyce. But with this album, I've just taken the melodies that he wrote down in his fiddle books, which some of which have words associated with them, but many of them don't. They might be dance tunes, they might be folk tunes where we've lost the original lyrics. But doing these creative transcriptions has allowed me to get to know the poet Claire as a musician. And that has brought me even closer to him than my experience of setting his poems in a more formal context. Claire clearly grew up in a very musical environment. Um, his father, he says, knew a hundred songs off by heart, although he wasn't a, a musician, but he was a singer. And clearly the, the pub culture and um, the oral tradition really did put a lot of um, emphasis on people telling stories, but also singing songs and telling stories through song. He also talks about growing um, into the sociability uh, through music with gypsies. And, and he talks about learning by ear a different kind of fiddle playing from the gypsies. So clearly his learning in the fiddle, we don't quite know how he learned musical notation. We know that he learned to read and write through a dame school, which is just a, you know, a, a, a very cheap local school run, run by a, a woman on her own. But in terms of his musical knowledge, we actually don't know how he learned to write music or indeed how to play. When Toby Jones reads Claire, he reads it in such an incredibly musical way. Claire's poems, I mean, to me, it's one of the most extraordinary things about Claire's poetry, the way they sometimes feel like one long sentence that almost never takes a breath. I've seen Claire's uh, songbooks and the musical notation that he wrote in, in his own hand and never heard those songs. So to hear these things come alive and to be sounded out just makes me realise how poetry actually doesn't really exist in Claire's world without being sounded out. Poetry has to be read just as a song has to be sung. To be read it requires incredible imagination in the way the language is phrased and shaped and where the stresses are and what colour is used. And So watching Toby Jones do that with a Claire text is incredibly analogous to what a performing musician does in looking at looking at a sequence of pictures and working out where the notional breath is and how it might be phrased. He reads Claire like a musician and that's really important for a project which is really trying to explore John Clare as poet and musician. And then my blood rushed to my face and took my eyesight quite away. The trees and bushes round the place seemed midnight at noonday. I could not see a single thing. Words from my eyes did start. They spoke as chords do from the string and blood burnt round my heart. Are flowers the winter's choice? Is love's bed always snow? She seemed to hear my silent voice, not love's appeals to know. I never saw so sweet a face as that I stood before. My heart has left its dwelling place and can return no more. Well, I've known Toby for quite a while now because we were both in a film project a number of years ago um, and he's done a number of things for me at, at my university for students. And we just were thinking for a long time about what we could do together 
in terms of bringing Claire either to the stage or to film again or, or to some other kind of media. And, and of course, then I met Julian in Helpson, in John Clare's village, in the church that Claire avoided as much as he could um, every Sunday. Um, and Julian had already worked on Claire, and we decided we would try and collaborate somehow um, on, on a Claire project. And Toby was really interested in the idea of, of working text into and among music and original compositions. I've chosen to make these creative transcriptions for violin and clarinet in a broad sense because I, I wanted these tunes to feel kind of domestic every day uh, because I think that's the spirit in which John Clare collected them. And there's something so immediate about just a violin and just a clarinet. It's also born of the fact that this is a kind of lockdown project and I wrote them for clarinetist Kate Romano and her daughter Livy, who is a wonderful violinist. And they were, through lockdown, they were playing Bartok violin duos, dishing them up for clarinet and violin. And, and when Kate told me that, I just thought, ah, oh, that's the perfect solution for how to treat these melodies. They're the kind of pieces that can be played in a small context that are going to have an intimate feel but I guess for me as a composer, the fascination is then to use these, you know, very small resources, but then get inside their possibilities and find real variety and range and colour. And in fact, there's a, well, there's a huge, huge amount you can do with one instrument if you work hard. But with two, with the clarinet and the violin, there are lovely affinities, timbrely, when they play together, they're also differences. With a clarinet you've got the E flat, you've got the bass, so there are actually more than two instruments if we're being brutally honest. But also it felt important to me that the instruments I chose could suggest the outdoors, could suggest music from an oral tradition, music that could be played on the road, that music could almost be busked, if you know what I mean, rather than sort of formal concert music. And that's certainly the quality I've, I've driven for on this project. I very much hope that listeners to this album are going to sense these affinities between music and text, because what we've discovered by rehearsing and performing these transcriptions but also listening to Toby work is how many similarities there are with the challenges Claire presents. It's to do with a quality of the, the flow of something. It's to do with the, thing, the way things repeat. Claire's distinctive use of repetition of, of a particular word. He will drop it in a poem and then, and then he will poke that word and it will keep coming back. And that's very analogous to some of the musical structures in these tunes that I've transcribed, but also actually how I've transcribed them. I mean, in some ways, that's a grand tradition of folk tunes, because what can you do with a folk tune as a composer? And, and if you look at Russian nationalists or Bartok or Vaughan Williams, whoever, Percy Granger, you know, the, the most common thing is you just keep repeating the tune over and over and over and over again. And what you do as a composer, keep changing the landscape around the tune. And that, I've tried to do that, but I've tried to do that in a sort of John Clare spirit. So it isn't entirely predictable in the way that his poems are not entirely predictable. His poems on the page might look like a long, a long sequence of verses that appear to the eye to be in the same rhythm. But when you dig into them, there are irregularities and eccentricities at every turn. And I hope that quality of the unexpected is there in the poetry, but also there in the music.